we announced the creation and launching of the Build Albion Fellows Program. My name is Andrew French, and I'm a professor of chemistry at Albion College and also a councilman here in the city of Albion. Ten weeks ago, after a conversation with our incoming president, Maury Ditzler, about the college and the community, together we assembled a committee of college and community leaders. I would like those committee members to stand now. Many of them are here. Harry Bonner, Kathy Campbell, Maury Ditzler, Bill Dobbin, Joe Domingo, Mayola Dunklin, Robert Dunklin, Mandy Duville, Don Masternak, Talia Phillips, Elizabeth Schultheis, Peggy Sint, Sean Welker, Edie Williams, and Jerry Lynn Williams Harper. <clears throat> Together, this body of individuals arrived at this fellowship program, which we are going to talk about at great length today. I would like to introduce to you now the 16th president of Albion College, Dr. Maury Ditzler, who will tell us a little bit about the bill. So the bill, that sounds like a politician. <laughs> I'm not sure we have a bill to talk about, but we... Uh, we have a program, a program that I'm excited about. I haven't been here all that long, and so it's a delight to look out to the audience and see so many friends, so many new friends that I didn't know in July when I started. Uh, I feel part of a community, and that's as it should be because private residential liberal arts colleges thrive in small communities. You know, it's interesting if you look at the, the best 100 or 200 liberal arts colleges in the country, and we won't debate who those are, but we just know that we're one of them, right? But if we look in that group and think about where they're located, they're much more likely to be located in a town like Albion, Michigan, or Crawfordsville, Indiana, or Monmouth, Illinois, or Grinnell, Iowa, than they are in New York, or Los Angeles, or Denver. It's interesting to think about why that's true. It, it, it's probably logical because for a college to be residential, the students need to live on campus and be <laughs> present not only when they're in class, but outside of class as well. But it's not just the students need to be residential, the faculty and staff need to be residential. And a community like Albion that focuses, amongst other things, around the college is a place that if faculty and staff come and live in the community, their life focuses on the college, <laughs> so they are likely to be on campus not just when they're teaching, but they'll likely be on the campus weekends and evenings, and that's what makes a college work. There is a community, and it's a community of students, and it's a community of uh, residents in the area, and some of those residents are faculty and staff, and we all come together and make and, and things work out well. So one of the things that a college president needs to think about is whether or not the host community is healthy. And if for no other reason than purely pragmatic reasons, we cannot be a healthy college less unless our host community is healthy. Now, it's good that we have a pragmatic reason for caring about that because we also have an ethical or moral reason for caring about our community. And that's because our founders created us to be a college focused on our region. Right? They, at Albion, people said, if we're to have a great quality of life and a strong economy in South Central Michigan. We need a college here in Albion. Right? That was our purpose. And we did it so well, like so many other residential colleges, we worked with our community so well that people said, you know, you ought to take a look at the national and international issues as well. And we did that and we got so, it was so much fun to play on the national and international stage that we forgot sometimes to think about our local community. And when you forget to think about your local community, when you ignore your, your friends and your, your, your family and those around you, you often begin to get in trouble. And so we started to feel that, in fact, that's something that we need to think about again. All of you in the community said we need to forge those stronger relationships like we've had in the past between the college and the community. And it was easy to do that because we know that the national and international issues that we think and care about are the same issues that you in Albion think and care about. Right? The phrase I've learned since I came here is Albion is America. Right? Albion is a microcosm of America. The issues that face Albion are the issues that face the Midwest and all of our country. 
but we are an industrial city that had great industry in a post-industrial country, right? But there are lots and lots of industrial cities in the post-industrial country. We have wonderful diversity at a time when our country is grappling to figure out how it works through issues of diversity. <laughs> we have all of the opportunities and challenges of America right here in Albion. So certainly it makes sense for us to say, as a college, if we want to be effective on the national stage, we need a strong base so that we're a strong college. That's our Albion community. But if we work with our Albion community and we figure out what it takes to build Albion, we will figure out what it takes to build America. So we have been talking for the last months about <coughs> what will it take to build Albion. What does the college have to offer to many people in this town who are work very, working very hard to build, once again, strong quality of life and, and a new economic engine for this, this town? And the thing that we have to offer is an education. Right? We can offer lots of other things. The thing we have to offer is an education. It's what our founders knew. We need educated people living in and around the town. We need young people in this town to be educated, to be America's leaders, and move out and become giants of industry and society all over the country, and then pushing opportunity and wealth back to this community. They need to, to be working for corporations all over the world and establishing jobs back in Albion, right? So we don't want our people just to stay in Albion. We want them to go everywhere, but we want them to care about and rebuild our town. So what we need to do, we need to make certain that there are educational opportunities for our young people. And we can't control what the rest of the world does, but we can control what Albion College does. And we can make sure that our education at Albion College is available to all the young people in our town. One of the reasons it hasn't been as available is why is because a handcrafted education is expensive. And, and there are young people in our town, some of the brightest young people in our town, who find our cost to be out of range of what their family can handle. So what we're announcing is a program that will make the Albion College education affordable even to the students with the greatest need in our town. We want it available to all of our students. We want to make sure it's available to those who have greatest need. So what we're going to do is we will provide financial aid that goes all the way up to the full cost of room, board, and tuition without loans to the young people in our town. No out of pocket. No out of pocket costs other than things like books and incidentals. And no loans for our neediest students. Now as we move from there to families that have a little bit more need, we'll ask them to pay a modest amount towards the education. But our neediest students will have no cost for an Albion education. And our, the other students, as we move through, will be very minimal cost, certainly within the ability of the families to pay. We can't do that for every young person in the country. We, we, we could, but we do have bills to pay. <laughs> On the other hand, institutions have priorities, and they make decisions about what's important to them, and that's where they give their scholarships. Some say the most important thing we do is play football on Saturday. Let's give football scholarships. Others say the most important thing that we do is be number one on all the ranking lists, and so we want the highest SAT scores, so that's where we're going to spend all of our scholarship dollars. At Albion College, we said that the most important thing that we can do is educate the young people in our host community, the community that has given us a, a safe and friendly environment for over 170 years, and that's where we're going to put our financial aid dollars in the coming years. And we have a long-term commitment to this. When I talked to those in the community, you said, you know, it will have an impact this year and next year, but its <coughs> biggest impact will be in the future because we'll be able to say to a second grader or a third grader or a fourth grader, if you study hard, you can go to college because you'll have the grades to go to college. But on top of that, the college, there will be a great college that's available to you that your family can afford. And in this program, young people have to study hard, they have to get the grades, they have to be admissible to the college. If they reach that level, then the finances will not be an inhibition. And so that allows the, the, 
to teachers in the elementary schools to make promises to young people. If you work hard, if you make the grade, a college education is something that you can get your arms around. And as more and more of our young people believe in education, the town is going to grow and it's going to thrive and it's going to continue to be a, a community that's able to support this institution. We're excited about the future. I, uh, I think some of the details of this will be described by, uh, by Professor French. Uh, when I arrived in town, I started getting to know people and Andy said, I'm a chemistry professor, so was I. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm a city councilman. I said, let me, let's talk about what we can do in the town. So, so I asked uh, Andy if we could get a community group together to plan this program. And they've done that. Andy knows the details better than anyone else. So I find it ironic that I'm asked to provide details and everyone who knows me knows I'm not that much of a detail guy, but <laughs> we'll, we'll do our best. So as the committee thought about the eligibility, I think one of the first things we wanted to recognize is that Albion is in the city of Albion. And so students who live in the Albion public school catchment area uh, will be eligible for this program. Um, we also wanted to um, really support our local community school and with the loss of our high school we found it be, we thought it was very important that students who completed at least three years in the Albion public school system and we're thinking the middle school years uh, will be uh, eligible for that program as well students who are accepted to Albion College as first year students will then complete an interview with uh, members of the college and the community and our staff and they will be asked a, a particular question that will be centered on the idea of an issue that they see that needs fixing in the city of Albion and what sort of solutions can they come up with to uh, address those concerns. And if those, if those issues are tangible and real and doable, then you, as you might imagine, that could become something that that particular student would then work on during their four years at Albion College. The summer prior to uh, their start in their freshman year, they will be uh, working for the college full time, 10 weeks, 40 hours a week, uh, and they will be expected to do work in and around the community as part of that work. Uh, the jobs that we have in mind include service work, some supplemental instruction, and projects designed to build the community. Over the course of the college students' uh, years at Albion College, we expect that their summer jobs will increase in responsibility uh, to fit what the student is interested in studying as a college student. So we would work with their academic advisors, probably be their academic advisors at some point, to help tailor their work experience in the summer uh, to something that they are passionate about uh, moving forward in their life. So obviously, we see this summer program as an opportunity to give students life skills, work skills, training that will help them in whatever path they choose moving forward, whether it be graduate school or a job um, or what have you. Uh, during the school year, we would expect students to have a 10 hour a week work study job. Uh, and that job can, again, be very varied. There are lots of uh, jobs on campus, but we would also expect them to be actively involved in our Albion volunteer group um, that's led by Pam here, so Pam Schuler. Um, so we hope that, again, that they would continue their summer of working in the community on projects that help build the community, that they would extend that, that they would reach out to other students who are not from Albion, who are part of our Albion volunteer group, and be able to work with them uh, on projects in the city of Albion. We also hope that there will be an academic piece, and that's my job for the spring, uh, is to design an academic piece as well. Right now, we're envisioning this as a quarter unit course, which would work and focus on academic skill development, as well as uh, <coughs> academic advising. So we would partner with our existing structures on Albion campus to assess where the students are, what their writing is like, what their study skills are like, to help them learn how to be successful college students. Um, so we also hope that we will have faculty involved in this process so that they would provide the students coming in with an opportunity to experience what does it mean to be, for example, in a chemistry class? What are my expectations for students? What does note taking look like? What does class participation look like in a chemistry class or an English class or a religious studies class or a philosophy class? So that when students come in the fall semester and be, are enrolled, they will have the experience. They will have met faculty 
they will have connected with the academic community on the campus so that they will be even more successful. And finally, there's a mentoring piece that we wish to really emphasize. We hope that current students who are high need students at Albion College from other communities who are upperclassmen, whether these students as sophomores and juniors would then continue to be mentors for the new class. So it was mentioned in the committee, this idea of Albion, build Albion fellows finding their own replacement. So that could be an idea where students could work with the community schools during the summertime for part of the time, tutoring and mentoring middle school students or high school students who are in the community of Albion who are working on academic work. And these students can go and be mentors to them and talk about what they're doing at Albion College, what they're doing in the community so that they can then be strong applicants for us when they again apply as seniors in high school, whatever high school that they go to can be strong applicants for the Build Albion Fellows. Okay, so I think that's about it. I would like to now introduce Jerry Lynn Williams Harper, the superintendent of Albion Public Schools, who was on my committee and has some uh, comments to make as well. Thank you. Good afternoon, and I'd like to say we are undoubtedly ecstatic, excited, and every adjective that I can think of. But I need to recognize some people so you know how widespread this is. Did Randy stand up? Did my board members stand up? Gary, did you stand up? Manola, Bob, would you all stand up, please? You have had an integral part. Three years ago, when I came, this group of people was involved in saying, we want better, we want more, we want to put together programming that is the best that it can absolutely be so we can deliver <coughs> the finest students from this community so they can undoubtedly go anywhere they want. When I first met Dr. Ditzler, I said to him, my parents live right here and they don't know anything about them. Well, I can say now, because of the people in this room, they will take this message door to door. And I know that this will change the face of my school, the behaviors in my school, the academic emphasis in my school. Because why do you have to leave your own community to have some of the greatest learning around? I'm very proud to say that we are partnering with Marshall with the rigor because when my students leave Marshall, they are definitely going to be ready to come to Albion because we have set the stage in the elementary school for them to attack that rigor that Marshall is expecting. So I would like to say thank you very much to the people that are standing because they made a wickedly hard decision <laughs> three years ago and because of what they did is the reason that we stand here now united as a community, holding hands and singing kumbaya, <laughs> as it should be. So I would like to say thank you to all of our university <coughs> counterparts. Thank you to the community. This is a strong community, and we really are seeing what community, university, and school districts can do. Thank you. Thank you. Another key part of our committee was uh, the mayor of Albion, uh, Joe Domingo, and so I'd like to give him an opportunity to have a few words as well. Mayor Joe. Thank you. And welcome, everyone. <clears throat> I'll tell you, this is a tremendous <laughs> event to have it, uh, to Albion. It just goes to show you what everybody's going to do to make us move forward. Um, it's a true sign of the college, the community, and everybody to put this together and do it for three people right here. Stand up if you would, please. And Mr. Bonner, these three right here are with the Mayor's Youth Coalition. They all became A students this semester. helps me tremendously along with kids and hope this is what it's about ladies and gentlemen this is what it's all about this is what we're doing this for and I expect to see these three hopefully be right in line 
with the rest of them to take this fellowship and build on it and tell everybody what it's about. And we can't do it without them, and we can't do it without you. This is true, true collaboration between the city and the Elgin College. Thank you all very much. So now I'd like to open it up for questions. Um, thank everyone for coming. But, uh, if there are any questions, I'll be glad to either answer them or point them into a direction of someone who can answer them. So. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely blown away by this, um, and I. But I do have. I work with the teams, and I have a question. Sure. Is there any opportunity here for the last graduate of class of Albany to come home to Elgin College? And I'm. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm right. You know, no, I, just, I. I get that. My son is in the last graduating class of Albany College, and he's at Allegheny College, of course. But. Um, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Um, so we, we have not talked about, about that, um, and that's not something that, uh, that I'm at liberty to, to comment on right now. Um, we, we did talk about the possibility of transfer students with transfer credits. Uh, what we wanted was four years, because we felt that four years of mentoring was going to be what was required to, to sort of get everybody sort of going. Um, but I think that any student who's interested in transferring back to Albion, there are a whole bunch of scholarships that are available. Um, and they're listed on the handout over here on the table that, that students who are wishing to apply to Albion as, the, as part of that last graduating class from the high school or not, uh, there are lots of very generous scholarships. Uh, there's a Jess Womack scholarship in there. Uh, among other, many Albion leaders have donated to make scholarships available for Albion High School graduates. So those are available. Yeah. Andy, I heard you say that, that once they're completed, they're going to be middle school that it doesn't matter which high school that they that go is, to? That is correct. And that is correct. Uh, anyone in the school district, which, which includes us people out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. Yeah, so we have an agreement. The public schools, the community school has an agreement with Marshall High School, but we recognize that for lots of different reasons, kids are going to other high schools, and we didn't want to turn away a student who graduated from our community school, and just because they chose to go to Concord or Parma or Springport or Homer, that they would somehow be ineligible. So we wanted to open it up to all students who graduated from the three years at the elementary school uh, would be eligible for this fellowship. Thank you. As most of us know, the financing school is based on hope time. Is there any thought about offering some this or some part of it to students who live outside that will choose by, by virtue of school to go to Chicago? We hadn't <coughs> thought of that because, in fact, we haven't. We don't have students from other communities. Right. But now, that's right. No, I get that. So that would be certainly something we would have to look into. Absolutely. You might want to. Sure. Like that, you certainly want to have right. more than three years. Sure. But it's something to look at. Sure. That's a very good point. That's yeah. what we want. We want right. to attract. Right. Instead of lose. That's right. That's a good point. You know, there are a lot of rules you have to make up, but, but our, focus is not, our focus is not on excluding young people, it's attracting young people. And so there are lots of what ifs that we can't imagine right now and, and possibilities. And we'll have to we'll have to do some of these fine this fine print as we go. And, and there, there does have to have to be limitations. We can't open this up to everyone in the country. On the other hand, our desire is that young people who have an attachment to the city of Albia, yeah. get an opportunity for an education. And we also want to use it to attract people to our city. Uh, where's the city manager? Uh, right here. We were talking about uh, are there things that we can do as a college to help the city attract public safety officials to work in town. It's a, an area which is important to all of us. And as we were imagining how we might do that, we were thinking about ways that we could uh, work this program to make it very attractive to public safety officials so their children can be involved in this program. So I think there's lots of things we'll figure out. Our driving force is we obviously have to have some rules, but we're looking at attracting, not finding excuses to keep people out because, in fact, we want people in. I think I, think I hear you saying we want to attract not just students, we want to attract families. Yeah. That, that's correct. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's that's right. right. yeah. and, and I'm told that there are lots of houses of, uh, available for <laughs> sale in town. If, if people find this appealing and want to move to town, uh, we would welcome them. 
Yeah. 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 What are the yeah. plans at this point for really marketing and broadcasting this, and what can we do all in terms of help spread the word? So the question was, um, what are we going to do to help market this opportunity, and what can the folks in this room do? Well, the first is word of mouth. Obviously, every single one of you is now uh, filled with the knowledge of this program, so go and talk to your church members, your community members, your friends, your family, everyone who lives in Albion, tell them about this program. Uh, there is a, a brochure here in the front that is, you are welcome to take. That it is available online or will be shortly. Um, obviously, this, this press conference is going to hopefully travel throughout the region, and so, um, but I think that the more people who know about it, the better off we're gonna be. Uh, and we would ask for your help in that. If you have students or know of students that would be eligible, make sure that they know. We are launching this fall and this spring. So the entering class of 2015 will be our first class of Build Albion Fellows. And so we anticipate you know, five to 10 or so this year. So, um, but if there are more, let it be so. <laughs> Andy, uh, there was a comment made that city of Albion. I think you want to be careful. You I said, say the school district, I, I did. and mm -hmm. there are quite a few of us in this room who happen to live just outside the city, right. but are a part of the school district. Right, and, and, and uh, yeah, we did say the Albion Community School catchment area, so that is not the city only. So, Although we could suggest, Bob, that you move back into the city because we could sure use your tax. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There's something that I would like to add when we say, how do people know? Three years ago when I came to interview, I didn't see a sign on the highway that said anything about the city of Albion, about the school district. I saw the sign about the college. So I'm hoping that we, since then, uh, we have started publicizing and we have, the last two years, had a sign out on the highway. So people need to see us. People know need to know that we exist. And they need to know that 24-7. So there needs to be a sign about us. And I think this would be a grand way to start. So people know that there's passing a great place on the highway on both sides to the road. So I hope we're able to do that. Tom. Who's the primary contact person if people want to ask more questions? You know, be, uh, I would say that we want to switch this to our admission and financial aid uh, program, which will know the the ins and outs and what does it mean to be a high need student and and what are the various cutoffs. Those uh, the fine print is something that financial aid folks and admissions folks specialize in. They are familiar with this program. Uh, and that's that's the best place because the students also have to be admitted to the college. So if they want to participate, they need to get an application in and they need, need to make friends with the folks in admission hall. <coughs> but I will say, if you have a question of me, yeah. I'll be glad to answer it. <laughs> Any other questions? If not, I let, let me close with the thought that when I first arrived and got to know people, someone told me that Andy French and Joe ran against each other in a mayoral uh, election a few years ago. And, and I thought, in this world, too many people are more concerned about winning arguments than solving problems. I wonder if these two individuals will rise above that and be more interested in solving problems than having arguments. So I said, Andy, Go see if Joe will help you with this project. <laughs> and then I wanted to see would it work. And in fact, they, they worked together uh, marvelously well on this project. Remind us that in our community, there are people who say the solution to a problem is more important than who gets credit for it or who gets political points or who wins the argument. So Joe and Andy, thanks a lot.
Obviously, it's going to be a very exciting time. And we thank you for all your support. And uh, thanks for coming, and have a good evening.